complex numbers. We're going to start now with an introduction to complex numbers covering the argand diagram and the modulus of a complex number. Complex numbers are great numbers. They're the only numbers on your course that have two parts. They have a real part and an imaginary part. Here's the first part, 5, and the second part is 12i, and it breaks into the two parts. The 12i, then, has a real coefficient. There's 12 of them, and i is the imaginary part. i is defined as the square root of minus 1, and i squared is minus 1. Here's the general form of it in set theory, and it said C, the set of complex numbers, is the set of numbers A plus BI, where A and B are real, and I is the square root of minus 1. So we look now at the Argon diagram. We start by drawing the Argon diagram, and here we've got the real values, the right and left, east and west, and the imaginary values up and down, uh, north and south. So if we look at the, ima the value here, 7.7 7 plus i, we see it's 7 across and 1 up, or this one here, 12 across and 1 up. The Argon diagram is like the Cartesian system in that it's in four quadrants. It's got a, where everything is positive, both everything is east and north. We're talking about real values and real coefficients of imaginaries up here, 2 plus 2, 4 plus 2. And then you've got the left, the, the other sides as well. And here the real values are positive, but the imaginaries are ne coefficients are negative. And in this side, the real values are all negative. So this po point here is minus 5, minus 2. You move 5 minus on the, the real and minus 2 on the imaginary. Just for a moment, just go back to the number line. We're used to a number line and we learnt it. And the number line was really quite boring. It was just this line here. This was not. This was 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2. And it just moved up and down all the time. And pi might have been around here. And 4 was here, etc. But these numbers then, the complex numbers, allow you to move off this rigid line into the two-dimensional space. If we remember, you did a thing called the absolute value of a number. And the absolute value of 3 is 3. And the absolute value of minus 3 is 3. Because the distance from minus 3 to naught is the distance on the number line. We're now going to look at the Argand diagram as points. And their value is how far they are from naught naught. In this case, we've got 7 plus i. So we've got 7 out and 1 eye up, 12 across and 5, 12 plus 5. Just as with the xy axis, these axes are perpendicular to each other, which is very, very handy to know. It means that there's a right angle there. And when there's a right angle, we can use the magic Pythagoras, and we'll deal with that. But that's the Argon diagram, two numbers, instead of just shown as a point, but shown as how far they are from naught. So the general complex number is called Z, and it's called A plus BI, where the two coefficients are real. The modulus, the distance, its length, is defined as how far it is from naught naught. Just as we do the real number line, but this time we move in two directions. And it's given by the formula a squared plus b squared with the square root. And that shouldn't surprise us really, because this is just your old days. We would have called that x. And we would have called this y, but we now call it a and b. And we square a squared plus b squared should give us this, z squared. So z squared would be a squared plus b squared. And that would mean that z on its own would be the square root of it. And why do we bother, why don't we call that a minus? Because the b by b would give us b squared and the i by i would give us minus 1. But we have to be a bit careful in that this is a distance and it's the distance we're talking about. And the distance is always the, the modulus. So that's why that equation is exactly the same as x squared plus y squared. 
is z squared, or Pythagoras. So let's calculate now the distance or the modulus of the point 3 plus i. How do you find out the length of that? Well, the modulus is represented using vertical bars. That's another of our symbols from this part of the course. And the modulus length is a squared plus b squared, just taking the coefficients. We don't use the i at all. That's 3. For the, so if it's 3 plus i, it would be a plus b i. We would write our box and we would say A is 3 and B is 1. Not I, because it's B I, so it's 1 I. So 3 plus I is really 3 plus 1 I. So 3 squared plus 1 squared is that. As the modulus represents the distance of the complex number, its value is always positive. So if we look at that just briefly, we can see that we get the modulus length is 3 squared plus 1 squared. The 3, the 1... 3 squared, 1 squared, and then the 10. So that's how we get it, the square root of. So we get the 3, and that would give us the 10 in total. That would be squared, that would be squared. So 3 here, 1, and the square root of 10. And we're using Pythagoras' theorem.